edition of Toys from the Attic. For today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Transformers 10's Returns, Sea Spray. Now, I'm really happy that they came out with this guy because he's actually one of my favorites from the original Generation 1 cartoon. I think him and Cosmos are kind of ranked the same in my book. There's just something about the character from the original Generation 1 cartoon that I really dug. I think it was just his overall upbeat attitude and how he interacted with his fellow Autobots. Plus the fact that he was one of the only um, sea buried Autobots at the time. And his voice was really memorable. He had that really nice merman bubble voice like, Hey, Thunderbirds, let's go over to the sea and hunt for the Decepticons. Yeah, so was, he just really stuck out in my book. Now as far as his, uh, this little figure goes, I do have two little issues. One's with his gun and then the other's with his alt mode. But I'll get to those in a little bit. As far as his articulation goes, his head can kind of move side to side, but these two uh, little motor engines kind of get in the way of that. It can't move up and down. I would kind of consider that a downside, but because it's part of Sea Spray's overall look and design, I'm going to kind of give that one a pass. His arms have a pretty good range of movement, except you can't get him up all the way with his little ball joints just because his uh, little arms and shoulders get in the way, but he can kind of move it all around, so it does make up for it. Has another nice ball joint for the elbow. He doesn't have any waist swivel, but he does have a nice hip swivels. And once again, just because of how he's um, the, the hips are molded and these they're kind of big and clunky, you can't get them out all the way. There's a little uh, thigh swivel right here, a double knee joint if you really needed to, and a little bit of an ankle tilt back, but that's actually part of his transformation. Despite those limits on his legs, though, you can still get him in some pretty good transform or uh, poses, I should say. Ugh, I'm just tongue-tied right now. Now his gun does pop off from his chest right here and it reveals a little Autobot symbol right here. And one would think that it was actually just part of his uh, transformation naturally. But here's my little issue is there's no little peg to actually fit into uh, his hand. You actually have to put this little slot right here in, the, in this little hole right here. And that's not overly bad I should say. He actually kind of looks nice with his little gun or is that a gun that should shoot little missiles out? I'm not really quite sure. My only uh, concern is that that little uh, peg is going to pop off or break over time if I'm not careful and then, uh, my, then he can't hold his gun at all. So yeah, that is one little, con that's my major concern with that. He does kind of seem a little bit back heavy right here. You can see just how much is hanging off from right here. You would think he'd topple over, but thankfully his feet are kind of oversized to where it kind of counterbalances him a little bit. So he does stand very nicely in his regular pose. Now to transform him, we're actually going to remove his little gun and flip this little panel up to actually hide his face because he's one of those few Transformers where his head would be in complete view if it wasn't for this little panel. Next, we're actually going to take his back right here and pull this forward because that's actually going to reveal the back of his uh, little sea boat or uh, hovercraft mode. Then we're going to take his arms, straighten them out, put them into these little slots right here. That's right there. Next, we're going to move these parts back like so, make sure his head's still there. Then we're gonna move his legs down like this, uh, so they kinda lock into place. Then we're gonna move his hips back, bring his hips up, make sure everything's into place. And then there's another little peg that slides right into this little slot right here. And just so we don't forget, I'm going to take his little engine and, or his little uh, mounted gun and put it right here on his chest. And there you go. Sea Spray is now in his transformed, transformed mode and he's ready to surf the ocean. And he just kind of sits there. I wish they had put some little wheels right here, I guess, on either his foot or back here. Just so that you can have him roll across uh, hard surfaces. Otherwise, yeah, he just sits here like a brick. There isn't even any gimmick to where he can actually float in the water if you wanted to take this guy into the pool or something. So yeah, that is just my one concern with the, his vehicle mode right now. He just kind of sits there and he'll be display only. Now also with most Titan Returns characters, he does have a little cockpit that you could open up right here and you could actually put any little uh, Titan Master in here. For example, I'm gonna put Grimlock in here. Just close him up so now Sea Spray can actually ride around with Grimlock in him and, oh, his face will come down. And you could just patrol the ocean with the little uh, Grimlock Titan Return Master in there. Anyways, this has been a look at Transformers Titans Return Sea Spray. Uh, despite those two little flaws with his gun and his vehicle mode, I still think he's a really cool figure. And the color scheme just really nice and bright, so he's a nice little addition to your collection if you want to pick him up. Anyways, this has been a look at Transformers Titans Returns Sea Spray. Once again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen today, please feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment below in the comment section. Any advice for the show will be greatly appreciated. Who knows, something you suggest may appear on the show in the future.